Hi, thanks for tuning into Singularity Prosperity. This video is the fourth in a multi-part series discussing computing. In this video, we'll be discussing computing performance and efficiency, as well as how the computer industry plans on maximizing them. The performance of a computer isn't measured by its speed, but by the operations it can do. Thus, a new unit of measurement, the flop, was introduced. The number of floating point operations a computing device can do per second. Observing the trend from the 1960s, the performance of computers has grown 11 orders of magnitude, in other words, 100 billion times. From 1 mega flop, 1 million instructions a second in 1965, to just about reaching 100 petaflops, 100 quadrillion instructions per second just in 2016, achieved by China's supercomputer, the Taihu Light. To put the scale of that number in perspective, 100 quadrillion seconds is approximately 317 million years. 317 million years ago, Earth was a giant supercontinent, and reptilian life was just beginning to evolve. It is expected that the supercomputer industry will achieve the performance of one exaflop, one quintillion instructions per second by 2020. That's about the same amount of operations as the grains of sand on Earth. At an exaflop of performance, we'll be able to simulate the human brain on a computer. This increase in computing performance isn't showing any signs of slowing down, with zettaflop performance expected by 2030. Now at this point, you may be asking what the limit on computational operations is. According to current laws of physics, this could reach upwards of 1 to the power of 50 flops by utilizing a black hole as a computing device. This may sound absurd, but in future videos on this channel, we'll definitely delve into how this is possible. Bringing it back to Earth, let's focus on some of the revolutionary new ways the computer industry plans on shifting to increase compute performance and efficiency. The computer industry is beginning to reach an inflection point, where clock rates are capped and current implementations of the transistor are reaching their minimum sizes. The clock rate is the speed at which the CPU executes. It is a pulse that is generated to make sure everything in the processor is synchronized, and with each pulse, instructions can be executed. Now clock rates are steadily increasing up until the early 2000s, from 100 MHz in the early 90s to 4 GHz by the early 2000s. That's a 40-fold increase in the span of a decade, so you may be wondering why they plateaued afterwards and haven't recovered since. The answer is the end of Denard scaling. Denard scaling is another law just like Moore's, stating that as transistors get smaller, their power density remains constant. Essentially, this meant that as transistors got smaller, their power consumption and heat generation would remain constant or decrease. Once transistors crossed into the sub-100 nanometer mark, this stopped holding true, and increasing the clock would result in massive power usage and extreme heat generation due to the density of transistors in such close proximity. As you can see, past about 4.5 GHz on most processors, the power usage versus clock rate trade-off starts becoming very unfavorable. Thus, a collective decision by the industry was made to stop increasing the clock speed and focus on adding more transistors as well as parallel hardware to chips, making them able to execute more instructions per clock cycle. Continual miniaturization of the transistor has been the current industry go-to solution for increasing performance and efficiency. Computing devices are just beginning to hit 10 nanometers, with a clear runway down to 3 nanometers by 2025. IBM estimates that scaling from 10 to 5 nanometers will yield a 40 to 50% boost in performance and a 75% boost in energy efficiency. Following that, scaling from 10 to 3 nanometers could potentially yield 60 to 80% gains in performance and 90 to over 100% gains in efficiency. However, within the next decade, based off these two factors of computing, transistor miniaturization and clock speeds, computing performance would stop growing. While hardware and software parallelism and optimization are always going to be ways to continue milking more performance and efficiency from current architectures, completely new paradigm shifts will be needed to continue growth that follows the exponential performance trend. Before we continue, if you want more insight into transistor miniaturization and computing parallelism, be sure to check out the previous two videos in this computing series. Back on topic, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, seems particularly interested in investing nearly a quarter of a billion into the development of 3D integrated circuits and research into new materials as the next major paradigm shifts in computing. The era of silicon is coming to an end. There have been and are multiple research projects studying new materials that can replace the infamous silicon semiconductor. Out of these, so far, most bets are being placed on carbon. To be more specific, 1 nanometer thick graphene and carbon nanotubes, with carbon nanotubes just being graphene rolled into a cylinder. The goal is to use this material to replace every facet of not only computers, but electronics design as well, from wiring to the chips themselves. 
Graphene has an extremely high thermal and electrical conductivity, much higher than silicon. Simply put, this means it could handle more heat and use less power, meaning the computing industry could begin following Denard scaling once again. This translates to the ability to increase clock rates to insane levels, in the order of terahertz, allowing for computers a thousand times faster than today and using one one hundredth the power. Earlier in this video, I mentioned that at one exaflop, we'll be able to simulate the human brain. The human brain, however, only uses 20 watts of power, whereas the computer we'd use to simulate it would use power in the order of megawatts. A graphene-based computer could bring this down in the order of kilowatts. This would also translate to consumer devices. Imagine an iPhone with a battery that could last for a month on a single charge. Beyond the massive performance and efficiency increases graphene brings, this super material also possesses other amazing properties, such as its stronger than steel strength and flexibility. These properties will not only shape the field of computing, but every electronics-based field, such as a new era of sensors which will allow devices to become smarter. Graphene has the ability to record radiation on terahertz levels, as well as the unique ability to change its electrical properties based on smell. Imagine wearable medical sensors able to detect the slightest deviances in heartbeat, phones that can serve as carbon monoxide alarms, air pollution integration into Google Maps, the list can go on and on. The Internet of Things will also be massively affected by graphene, bringing upon the era of flexible electronics. Imagine digital clothing, smart walls and windows, phones that could turn into tablets and more. The use cases graphene-based computational devices will open up are never-ending. The field of nanoengineering is still in its infancy but rapidly developing. As it progresses, we'll discover more materials and ways to better utilize graphene, carbon nanotubes, and other carbon structures. This channel will definitely be dedicating many videos to come on nanoengineering. 3D integrated circuits are exactly what the name suggests, stacking layers of transistors above each other and interconnecting them. While there are a few approaches research teams are taking to achieve this, the DARPA-funded monolithic 3D circuit-on-chip program has made the most progress. Nothing has been demoed to the public as of yet, but some of the performance and efficiency metrics they've released are astounding. The results were measured for a 2D 7 nanometer transistor node versus a 3D implementation at 7 nanometers for multiple machine learning models. As you can see by the results, the 3D implementation crushed 2D processes, yielding performance boosts in the order of 100 times greater. Past machine learning hair the performance boosts over various other compute tasks, such as page rank and regression, yielding gains up to 1000 times better than 2D architectures. These gains are both distributed in terms of energy efficiency and performance in terms of execution time. Much of these massive performance boosts are due to the demolition of the memory wall. While computer processing performance has seen significant gains over the years, the memory gap has only continued to increase, by approximately 50% per year, one of the computer's greatest bottlenecks. This is because accessing memory takes time, which drastically slows down computer performance. In some tasks, such as machine learning, 80-90% to 90 of the time is just spent accessing memory. With 3D integrated circuits, the memory and compute logic is placed on different layers, significantly increasing the memory bandwidth. This is why such massive gains in performance and efficiency are seen. Now, 3D SOCs are still silicon-based, meaning heat dissipation will still be a major issue. This will only get worse with multiple stack layers. The current solution, like we did with 2D architectures, is to bring down clock rates once again, potentially in the order of 1 to 2 GHz. However, imagine the insane results that can be achieved once this technology matures and is redesigned with graphene and carbon nanotube-based processes. DARPA expects their first functioning 3D integrated circuit prototype by 2019. Up to this point, we've discussed how computing performance is measured and two massive paradigm shifts, the use of new materials and 3D integrated circuits to continue increasing performance and efficiency. Now these implementations are still very much in their development stage, with mass production for either not expected until the mid to late 2020s, right on par for when transistor scaling is expected to stop. While we are in this transitionary period, more emphasis is now being put on hardware and software, maximizing optimization through parallelism and other techniques. In terms of hardware parallelism, elaborating further on what we discussed about in the previous video in the series, there are still many routes that can be taken by the computing industry to improve performance. Making the pipeline wider, in other words superscalar pipelines, making the instruction pipeline longer by adding more instruction computation units which would allow more instructions to be done per clock cycle, more cores, architecture redesigns, and more. Another major hardware topic we'll be covering in the next video in this series, and something we momentarily touched upon earlier, is overcoming the memory and storage gap. In terms of software parallelism, the industry is going through massive changes. Focus on multi-threading and utilizing hardware resources is becoming standard in every industry. Also, exemplified by machine learning, more advanced algorithms, probabilistic programming languages, new protocols and more, optimization is starting to become better and better, year after year, month after month. These topics and the evolution of software itself are topics for future videos. However, there are tons of great creators on this platform and resources online if you wish to learn more now. With both hardware and software, after years of stagnation, competition is starting to become much fiercer, the driving force of innovation. This is also great for us, the consumers, leading to better products at competitive price points. 
Now the majority of our discussions over the past few videos have solely revolved around the CPU as a primary computing device. The CPU is general purpose, not designed for a specific task. This is great for consumer desktops and laptops, but a huge bottleneck in terms of computational performance and efficiency. After covering solutions to decreasing the memory gap, the following videos will be on GPUs, FPGAs, and application-specific integrated circuits ASICs, as a driving force of the computing industry. Following our computing hardware videos, we'll focus on huge paradigm shifts that will shake the competing industry on top of the 3D integrated circuits and new materials we discussed in this video. These videos will include optical, quantum, and bio computers as well as cloud computing. At this point, the video has come to a conclusion. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch it. If you enjoyed it, consider supporting me on Patreon to keep this channel growing. And if you want me to elaborate on any of the topics discussed or have any topic suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. Consider subscribing for more content, follow my Medium publication for accompanying blogs, and like my Facebook page for more bite-sized chunks of content. This has been Encore, you've been watching Singularity Prosperity, and I'll see you again soon.